So this was a 33-year-old male with a violaceous nodule in the ear canal. It had been excised several years ago, but recently it recurred. So this is a re-excision. You can see this little streaks here. I call this the Wolverine sign, like Wolverine took his adamantium claws and sliced right through the tissue. Um, uh, I hope I don't have any trademark violation uh, for the uh, X-Men uh, trademarks, but in, in any case, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I won't get in any trouble. But I think that this is usually a good sign that there's something hard in the tissue bone, calcium, form material, or maybe it was the case before and the histotech just hadn't changed the blade yet. But anytime I see this, I go looking for, for something hard that would have gotten drug across the tissue and scratched it open. In this case, this, they were down, the uh, ENT surgeons were taking this uh, pretty near the, uh, the mastoid bone, if I recall. Um, so in any case here, we have uh, this nodule that's cellular, and then we have some background stuff that's just uh, some increased vessels and inflammation, and I'll go show you that um uh in a minute but first this nodule here is a kind of cellular lobular proliferation of vessels with very plump endothelial cells and it's in some areas hard to tell that you're looking at vessels because they look almost like little nests or little islands and you can't even see a lumen it also looks very busy there's kind of looks like blood filled slit like spaces plump endothelial cells um, you know, occasionally you'll find some mitoses. Could look kind of scary. You could think of Kaposi sarcoma. You could wonder about maybe a, a, a subtle angiosarcoma or something else. Also, some of the cells have vacuoles with little erythrocytes in them, kind of like the blister cells of epithelial hemangioendothelioma. So you could have your brain going to a lot of different places, some of which are kind of scary, and wondering, you know, is this a bad vascular tumor? But no, it's not. One clue is that in the background we have mixed uh, lymphocytic infiltrate with scattered eosinophils. There's some hemocytorin and some blood, but look at all the eosinophils there. So I think you probably see where this is going. And here, where you can see a more well-formed vascular channel, you can see epithelioid endothelial cells bulging into the lumen. All right? So this is angiolymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia, also known as epithelial hemangioma. Now in the WHO, the 2020 fourth edition of the Bone and Soft Tissue WHO book, they recommend that we not call this angiolymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia and that we instead call it epithelioid hemangioma. And I think their point's well taken. These are truly neoplasms, at least the true ones are. There may be some reactive things that mimic this, that, that is particularly in the skin. But, uh, but in any case, these probably are really neoplastic. Um, uh, about 50% of cases, if I recall, have um, fusions involving the FOS, F-O-S, or FOS-B uh, genes in around half of cases. So that, that goes with the idea that these really are neoplasms that just bring along a brisk inflammatory infiltrate, often with lots of eosinophils. Let me show you away from this kind of cellular uh, nodule. Well, actually, here's another cut of the cellular nodule. You can see the vascular channels, but the ones that are kind of compressed and have really plump endothelial cells, those sometimes uh, give people a concern because they can look kind of scary. But here in the background, look what we have. Brisk inflammation, and if we go inside these very brisk inflammatory nodules with lymphocytes and eosinophils, we'll start to find vessels with epithelioid cells lining the lumen. So this is kind of a more subtle background component of angiolymphoid hyperplasia, aka epithelioid hemangioma. So usually I follow the rules of the, the bone and soft tissue WHO book, but I'm going to tell you as a, a soft tissue and bone pathologist who's also a derm path, this is one place I make an exception. When I sign out this tumor, I still call this angiolymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia, uh, open parentheses, epithelioid hemangioma close parentheses, or vice versa. I will say one point of, of a potential confusion is, uh, and it actually happened in the past, of, of an epithelioid hemangioma. Someone could read that and go search for it on Google, and one of the things that will come up is epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. Um, and in fact, I had a time where a resident had contacted me about a case and asked about this and, you know, if they needed to do a CT scan of the lungs to make sure there weren't lung metastases. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. 
no, you're thinking of epithelial hemangioma endothelioma, not epithelial hemangioma. And they said, oh, you know what? I looked for it and actually one of the links uh, or the articles or resources that popped up was actually about epithelial hemangioma endothelioma. So I think it's important to know that those names do sound alike. And even though obviously they are different words, um, to someone who is not really familiar with these entities, it could get confused. And so uh, that's a good point to know. These vessels, I really like this case because you can see that even the scattered vessels really have very epithelioid endothelial cells. And I think that anytime you have a vascular lesion with epithelioid endothelial cells, you have the potential to get these cytoplasmic vacuoles in the endothelial cells. You can see this in epithelioid hemangioma slash ALHE. You can see it in epithelioid hemangioendothelioma and sometimes even in epithelioid angiosarcoma and others. So just recognize that vacuoles don't necessarily mean epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. They can, they're, they're often seen in other tumors, particularly in ALHE, I see them, okay? Here's another vessel, okay? And then the other thing I wanted to point out about this case and by the way, this patient, their previous biopsy and excision or whatever it was a few years ago was also called um, angiolymphoid hyperplasia slash um, epithelial hemangioma. So it was known what this was already. And I unfortunately, I don't have FOS or FOS B available in my lab, uh, but it's supposed to work very nicely. And, and one of your colleagues, uh, Christina Vargas, uh, who I know from Twitter and who is a, an Australian um, pathologist, who uh, just very recently with colleagues published a nice paper about some of the unusual variants of inflammatory hemangioma, like um, like Apache and some of those others, um, actually often have a FOS or FOS B. I've not read the whole paper yet, so hopefully I'm not going to get wrong. FOS or FOS B expression, which kind of uh, is a strong suggestion that maybe those belong in the spectrum of angiolymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia. Now, this is beautiful. Look at this. When you have a cellular um, uh, vascular neoplasm, if you're struggling to decide if you're worried about the growth pattern or if there's infiltrative um, anastomotic channels or slit-like spaces or something like that, and you're worried about capsid sarcoma or angiosarcoma, sometimes one of the tools you can use is to do a vascular marker and uh, if you want, you can do it alongside a smooth muscle actin. And the endothelial cells in the vascular channel pattern will be highlighted beautifully. So here, this is not needed diagnostically. In this case, it was very straightforward, I think, on the H&E. But for teaching purposes, I thought this is a very beautiful example of, of what looked quite busy at first on H&E and now is very organized, very well-formed vascular channels. It also can help highlight like the lobularity. And even though there are a lot of vessels scattered around in the background, they're all really well well formed. They're not infiltrating and invading and anastomosing like an angiosarcoma would. They're not solid cellular sheets. They're not infiltrative spindle areas. They're well formed vessels and with a vaguely lobular architecture here. Some dilated kind of feeding vessels and then smaller compressed vessels where you can barely make out the lumen because the endothelial cells are so closely compressed together. And what looks very cellular actually it turns out is because there's a lot of background uh, uh, pericytes and histiocytes and lymphocytes and other cells in the background, probably fibroblasts and myofibroblasts, all of those things in the background that are imparting an appearance of cellularity, but it's not all endothelial. I would also like to point out on the CD31, uh, the background blushy kind of granular staining that you're seeing, those are not endothelial cells, those are histiocytes. Histiocytes normally stain with CD31, but it's kind of a weak granular staining that is much weaker than the background endothelial cells. These are endothelial cells, blazing, you know, level 11 positivity, and then the background may be level three granular positivity, those are histiocytes. So in general, if you're looking at a lesion and you're wondering, well, I see some CD31, or I see some patchy ERG staining, and you're wondering, is it enough to be an angiosarcoma or to be a vascular tumor? If you have to ask yourself if it's enough, the answer is probably no, because usually an angiosarcoma is going to be solid, blazing, wall-to-wall -wall expression with ERG and CD31, okay? So we'll talk about that later in, in, um, in another case. Hint, hint. There, those are histiocytes. So beautiful example, and for contrast, ERG. I love ERG. It's, it's a very sensitive marker, but it's not specific. It tends to be a bit cleaner than CD31, 
and CD34. And I've got a little write-up on, on Kiko about how I use vascular stains and what their pros and cons are. Uh, one thing, though, that I really uh, like about, about CD31 in, in a setting where you're trying to see the pattern is it's got such strong, crisp, membranous, and cytoplasmic staining that it really like draws a dark, a dark line around each vascular space. Whereas ERG, you get mostly nuclear staining with some blushy cytoplasmic staining. It's not quite as crisp and pretty uh, at drawing the outline of the vessels. So if I want to rule out angiosarcoma, I love ERG in that setting. It's really nice. Uh, or, if, uh, you know, but uh, if I want to see the vascular pattern, I think that some of CD31 works a little better for that. Or CD34, although there's some caveats to 34, which we'll talk about later. All right. So I just thought that that was a nice treat for your eyes to see the stains there. And this is ALHE. And as you know, it's benign, but it can be multifocal or multinodular, and it can recur locally. So it's not uncommon for it to be kind of multinodular in the skin or the underlying soft tissue. And it's not uncommon for it to have uh, one or even more local recurrences, but it's not going to behave in a malignant fashion. All right. I hope you enjoyed that case as much as I did. Now, case nine.